Today we're here with golf coach, former world long drive champion of 1992. 1992, that's right. Monty Scheinblum, he uh, teaches lessons here at Oak Creek Golf Club. Yes. He works with some tour players and some other um, great players. And also, I, the reason I wanted to talk to you today was uh, your YouTube videos. Yes. Which have, are wildly popular. Some of them, yeah. It's kind of funny because, you know, I've put up over a hundred and you know, most of them get five, t well, about 10 or 15, 12,000 hits. But, you know, uh, randomly, three or four of them are 80, 100, 150,000. And is that just when blogs pick up on them? Or is it just something in the public that this is an idea that connects with people? You know, I haven't um, picked up on exactly what it is yet. Um, one of the most popular ones that I had was me standing in a park in a pair of cargo shorts and a t-shirt. Welcome to another one of my now infamous cargo short and t-shirt videos. Yeah, Ramon loves that video. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, another one I thought was something basic that everybody understood and I was just making it for a few of my readers that didn't understand it and that's been the most popular one. So, you know, maybe you know, less is more, simple is better is, is, is the trend. That's the same move. See, so now if I stand up, the club is at the level of the ball. Someone told me that the USGA did a study that once someone's been playing for three years, you've reached your golf potential. You're basically stuck with the ability that you had three years into golfing. Yeah, I don't Do you believe that? No, not at all. And um, so the basic question is, is it possible for a golfer to improve, to get better? Absolutely. I my opinion is is that there's been a little bit too much of a um, towing the party line, mm -hmm. you know, swing inside out, um, lead with the hips, you know, too many, I call them cliches, that people follow way too literally and way right. too hard. And um, it's just, it's, it's a little bit more subtle than that. You know, everybody's a little bit different. You know, you know, people say, you know, Monty, you have over 100 YouTube videos. Is the golf swing that complicated? Mm -hmm. And the answer is no. Uh, those 100 videos cover maybe four different concepts. And what I think is missing in golf instruction today is it's too much of a um, cookie cutter, one size fits all approach. Yeah. And I put up so many videos to try and reach as many people as possible with the same concept. So I think it's not the information as much as the approach is lacking. The, 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 the um, originality and approach is lacking. Well, that brings me to my, my, the one of the things that you talk about that I think is really interesting. I'm kind of a, I, when, I didn't know I was learning this way, but when I first started learning golf, I, I learned the golfing machine. Yeah. Uh, I was going to a place, I didn't know it was a golfing machine place, but before I, before I, after I was in it for a while, I realized that that was the philosophy behind. So <coughs> everything I do in my golf swing is, is lag. Yes. And, and load, I, I have kind of a float load and I am desperately trying to get to this point. Correct. And I'm always at this point. I'm right. pretty good. I'm leaning forward, but I'm not here where the best players are. But some of your videos, lag seems to be something that you're not, you're not even concerned about. Or the strange thing about lag to me is the harder I try to get lag and the more I try to sustain it, the more I let it out. Right. And why is that? Um, that's a great question. I have been, I've taken a lot of criticism over this. I've been a big proponent that lag, irrelevant might be too strong of a word, okay. but it is, it's not, it's a result. It's not a pursuit. It's not something to chase. It's not something that you chase. Uh, perfect for instance is you see so many golfers, you know, they throw it away back here. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Most of them are not throwing it away because they're not holding it or not trying to create it. They're doing something that's forcing the body to throw it away just to hit the ball. Because it gets to be, when, when you're practicing, it gets to be you're thinking, there's something mentally wrong with me. I just want to hit it. Or, right. Because I, I don't feel, I'm not doing it consciously, but I feel like this is happening. See. Why is, and I see everybody on the range doing this. Right. So, Here, here's where's the that coming from? Here's the deal. It's not a mental thing, though. It's not a mental okay. thing. It's absolutely a physical thing. Um, when I say 99%, that might be a low, right. low ball. 99% of my teaching is set up, backswing, and transition. Mm -hmm. Once you change direction, the ball's gone. 
Yeah. Okay, there's nothing you can do once you go like that. Um, the amount of time it takes the brain to send a motor function to the body is longer than the amount of time it takes to go from the top of the swing to the ball. So, mm -hmm. when people are throwing the way their leg, there's a reason for it. Some of the common reasons. If your upper body moves laterally, yeah. your body senses that's a steep angle of attack. Okay, right. so if I'm here and I lag it, Yes. I'm going to dig the club in the ground, throw it in behind the ball, take a deep right. divot. But most people, when they start going like this, they'll go like that, dig it. So their body recognizes this and starts to go like this to shallow it out. Okay? Number two, biggest reason. People come to my tee all the time. Their swings are too long. Everybody's heard, you need to maximize your backswing. Right. Make a full turn. You can't generate enough rotational speed to deliver this to the ball. Yeah. So your arms start to slow down and you lose it. They've turn. made their full turn at this point, but then, then the arms keep going. Arm overrun. There seems to be, that I've never heard before really, a strong correlation between how you make the first, say, one, two feet of your backswing yes. and how you retain your leg. Absolutely. One of your videos you said, okay, once you've done this, you're, you're dead. dead. You got no shot. What, it, why, why, what is the connection between doing this and then by the time you get back down to the ball, you're okay. in that horrible position. From, from, from this position right here yeah. where the club is behind you, you've got two choices. You can either stop the mm -hmm. swing right here and fling the arms away from you on that same path, which, you know, if you sustain the Super leg, you're, inside. you're going to shank it. Yeah. Okay. So you got to throw it to avoid the shank. Choice number two over the is top. to loop the arms. Once you loop it over the top, again, if you ha if you sustain the leg, it's a shank. Right. So, you know. So this first little part of the backswing, keeping it in front of your chest here and not letting it get back here. Yes. That's going to be critical to when you when you get back to impact. Exactly. And, you know, lag. You know, everybody talks about lag back here. Yeah. Like I say, that's why I say lag is irrelevant. The important issue yeah. is shaft lean and impact. Yes. Okay? Yeah. What you do back here couldn't be less relevant. Right. Here's so Steve what, Stricker almost doesn't lag it at all, but he's got great shaft lean. Great shaft lean. Yeah. This freaks people out. If I told you that from the top of the swing, that the arms are not supposed to do this and lag the club, right. that they're supposed to go like that, you'd look at me and you'd go, well, that's crazy talk, right? Definitely. Okay. Yeah. From this position, you know, I'm out of position, I have no leg, whatnot. Yeah. But if I don't move my arms and hands from this position and I just rotate my body, look where I get. Yeah. Okay. Which reminds me of the one video you made where you said, and it's really the, the counterintuitive way of golf instruction. It's absolutely right. Where where you get here and you tell people, okay, what I want you to do is flip it. Completely just okay. throw the angles out and Excellent flip it. Point. And you go right. perfect. Excellent point. This was the next point. When I said that where you get here is completely irrelevant, there's Ringing a the bell. awful, it. awful okay. stuff, and I'm, I'll explain why. Since shaft lean is what we're looking for, this goes to a whole other point where everybody wants to fire the lower body and have the arms be passive, right. which gets everybody doing yes. this, yeah. okay? The throwaway drill that, that you talked about, it does one thing and one thing only. It speeds up the right arm, okay? Yes. Uh -huh. The holding back here slows down the arms, gets them trailing the body, and then you lose it. The way to get shaft lean is the arms must accelerate out in front of the body. This is a... a and that's not going to be a, a hook or a snap? Absolutely not. It's okay. the opposite. Okay. The more forward you get your arms, look at that club face. That's how, more right. Yeah, yeah. How, how am I going to get it? In the, most snap hooks come because the arms are trailing, the face is open, the body stalls, and the hands roll. I've never seen anybody hit a hook who had their arms accelerating out in front of them. You're saying these snap hooks are coming from this lower body leaded thing. Now you're inside right. flipping. Yeah. I, I, I've come up with, I've kind of coined a term that a lot of people think is pretty funny. I call it the 68 ballerina move. Okay? Yeah. And quite literally, I'd say three out of every five single digit and mid handicap golfers that comes for a lesson 
has this position. Yeah. I call it the ballerina move because they're coming into impact and they're up on their toe. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's the 68. You're already here. Right. Right. Yeah. And I call it 68 because uh, you're a golf machine guy. The arms and the shaft are at P6. Yeah. And the lower body is where it should be at P8. But all I ever hear is you want the hips open at impact. Absolutely like right. This. So what's what's wrong with being okay. like that? Okay. Yeah. If the hips lead into that position too early and the arms are trailing, the hips have to stall. So I've ran out of hip you're, by this point. You know, your, your hips have reached their maximum range of motion. That's why you see a lot of swings do this. You know, the hips that, have gone nicely, they've stopped stall, completely, you throw, the flip, and then, then they finish nicely. And right. you think, oh, look at me. Right. I'm in a perfect I'm in a perfect finish. What happened? Right. I've seen, so, I've seen so that brings you back to this point of this goes a little first. Right. Here's the thing, and this is what I've been finding, not just in you know mid high handicap golfers, but scratch players, mini tour pros, even some PGA tour professionals. I've seen all the charts. Yeah. I've seen all the kinematic sequences. Mm -hmm. I know the lower body fires first. Right. Okay. Yeah. Everybody knows that. Yeah. You see slow motion video, but here's where golf instruction I think is failing. I don't think anybody is going to argue the point that in order for the golf swing to sequence properly, there's a proper interval in between when the hips start and when the arms start. Agreed? Yeah. Okay. What that number is is going to be different from person to person. Hips go first, then the, Th then the, yeah. the arms are going to start at some point yeah. after the hips. Mm -hmm. So let's say for me, my perfect interval between when the hips start and the arms start is let's say three hundredths of a second. Yeah. That's my interval. Yeah. If I'm in this position here, my interval was five or six hundredths of a second. Way too much. Way too much. Yeah. Okay. So which is such a short period of time, but when you're talking about percentages, that's that's a hundred percent times more. Right. Yeah. So here's what I've discovered. You tell any good player or any experienced player. You can have a guy who's an 18 handicap, but if he's been, he's been playing for 30 years, same thing. You tell any good or experienced player, start the downswing with your arms. Not a single one of them can do it. Right. Every single one of them. No matter how much they try to start with their arms, their hips will naturally still go. Absolutely, right. because, and then, and then we can get into, you know, the, why a pitching motion, the sequence is different. Every experienced golfer, when they get to the top of the swing, when they're searching for power, right. okay, they're gonna, their feet are gonna, it's called searching, for, I call it searching for sheer force. Sheer force is this. Every experienced golfer is gonna do this to start. So no matter how hard they try to start with the arms, the lower body, you're gonna see that go first. So if you're magnifying that by going, Okay, I'm going to lead with the lower body and let the arms trail and be passive. Yeah. You're going to end up like this. So you're saying most people in this concept that I'm talking about, been playing for three years, feel they've plateaued or are not getting better. Most people have, with that kind of level of experience golfing are need to think about arms first. Some. Okay. Some. Yeah. You know, um, it's a large number. Yeah. But everybody's a little bit different. Some people, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm a believer, you know, I stole this line from, a, um, from another pro. Um, I would rather speed up what's slow than slow down what's fast. Yeah. Like, I don't know, have you seen the zipper away video? That's one that's gotten a lot, a lot of popularity. Basically what I say is get to the top of the swing and start your downswing by moving your zipper or your tailbone to 1030. And your first move down is to go like this. That get, takes away the leverage of yanking on the handle too hard and steepening the shaft. Sam Sneed was yep. the best ever. Lee Trevino um, that, was very good at this. This, this. That's I'm oh, getting this yeah. away from the ball. Right. Exactly. That's that's you know Tiger tends to overdo it, yeah. and that that that's a whole different issue. But but, but definitely when it comes, to, it's, it's so funny how much these different topics connect. Right. And definitely when you when you talk about zipper away, well this is clearing space for you to get this forward shaft. There you go. If your zipper doesn't go away, you have to let it out Throw it to away. get back to the ball. Early extension there. Right. 
the right hip gets out right. too early, you're back here, and that's all you got. Okay. So what I do, what I, one of the drills I have people do is when you search for power, the hips are going to fly. So I have them grab like a 7 iron, and I say, how far do you hit 7 iron? And they'll go 170. Yeah. And I say, take this 7 iron out and hit it 100 yards. Yeah. And they're like, well, well, you know, it'll be good punching out of the trees and whatever. And I said, I want you to feel like you have no lower body action at all. You just swing your arms and hit it 100 yards. And lo and behold, pretty much every one of them goes like yes, this. That impact. They're, they're, and they look yeah. at the video and they go, you know, the ones that really freak out, this is, this is the theory behind, you know, getting back to the right hand throw. Yes. Okay. The, right, the, the people that try to hold the angle and lead with the body That's and, and end up like this, here's what happens. If they throw it from the top, the right arm speeds up. If the right arm speeds up, it helps retain the angle. But here's the big one. When the body senses that the right arm is moving faster, the body rotates faster. And even though you're trying to throw it away, you end up right here. You're gonna get just as much ro body rotation. You're gonna get more. One of, the, um, one of the great drills that I have people do is I say from the top of the swing, cast your left arm off your body. Okay, let's try this. From the top of my swing. Just get your left arm off your body. Okay. See, you didn't try to hold it. And look at how much hip turn you got. Right. Okay. And the example I give them, I said, okay, if you're a tennis player. Well, I forever I was doing a drill with a head cover under under my left armpit. Yeah. I'm and not, now that's not in fashion, I, right I, armpits. I don't fashion. like either of them. Okay. Because the people that do anything under the armpit end up swinging like this. Yeah, very narrow. Very narrow. There's some pictures of Hogan like this, people like it, but not really. Big deal about Hogan that people don't understand. He was able to achieve a lot of those positions because of the way he was built. Yeah, he had so, a freak level of flexibility. On top, on, on top, I learned everything I needed to know about Hogan. I did an infomercial with Ken Venturi 22, 23 years ago. Yeah. And Venturi, we got him started about Hogan and he went on and on for Hogan for about three or four hours and I was just sitting there yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah. And he goes, he, he called Hogan a knuckle dragger. And I said, does that mean what I think it means? He goes, yeah, yeah. Hogan could tie his shoes without bending over. Oh, okay. He was five foot six with a six foot wingspan. Really? Yeah. So for him to get in this position with the bent right elbow is really easy. For someone right. like me, yeah. I'm six foot two and I've only got a six foot wingspan. For me to have a bent right elbow at impact, I've got to be in there like that. Right. So you got to be careful when you're teaching or trying to emulate Hogan's swing. It might, it, it's very likely not anatomically possible for you to hit half the positions he hits. Next time on Be Better. Part two of my conversation with Monty covers one of the most damaging and misunderstood swing flaws, the over-the-top golfer. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel for more compelling golf content.